Well, hello and how are you? Hey friends, welcome to the Shen Show. I am your host, Shenandoah Briscoe, coming to you from right here in St. Charles, Missouri. Hey, you know what? Today is Friday, August the 28th, 2020, meaning I've got a happy birthday shout out going out to Craig, uh, to Greg Bishop. That's right, Greg Bishop. So without further ado, here's a birthday shout out. And song for you, Greg. I said, hey, Greg, I heard it's your birthday today. So happy birthday, I'm going to say. You know, you're one more year older today. So happy birthday to you, I say. I said, hey, Greg, I heard it's your birthday today. So that was one more trip around the sun today. So I guess you're feeling pretty good today. So happy birthday to you, I say. And many more. Cha 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 cha. Hey, yeah, there you go, Greg. Happy birthday. All right, let's give some no uh, new YouTube subscriber shout out. That's right. Got a new YouTube subscriber. Her name is Deborah Wisdom. Thank you for first for subscribing to my YouTube channel. I really, really do appreciate it. Because, hey, without you subscribing, hey, that leave me unsubscribed. Hey, all right? All righty then. And then let's see what else we got out here. Some Facebook pokes. Amanda Sue Little, a faithful, faithful Facebook poker. There you go. You are my pokey pal. I am poking you now. All right, let's see. And then, how about the Shin Show likes? Folks who throw a thumbs up on the Shin Show. Shin Show likes include Leone Pereza Fernandez, Rick Adams, Ashley Briscoe, Steve Clary, Marianne Williams Briscoe, Tina Cleeshulte, Ashbrook. And that would be the few that do every day, every day now. Uh, did I did did I did I did I did didn't I do I didn't put Martin Kelly on there Martin Kelly I don't psh, don't know why your name is not on that list it should always always be on that list uh, first and foremost I guess oh we don't want to put it right there in the middle though wake up <laughs> comma Martin Kelly go to sleep okay there we go it's on there now. Your name definitely on the list now, Martin. Okie dokie 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 doke. Hey, you know what? I hear tell that there are a whole lot of friends out there of Mr. Craig Roger Wyant. That's right. Mr. Craig Wyant has informed me that he has a whole lot of friends that he has told about the Shen Show who said that they watched the Shen Show or at least told him that they watched the Shen Show. And, well, I don't know, because I don't know if you are a friend of Craig's and do watch the show, you never mention it. But then again, Craig never mentions it either. If you would, please, just put a note down below, Craig's friend. And I would appreciate that. All right, you just put on there, Craig's friend, and then I can let him know that all the friends that he says he's got following uh, my show, he knows that they're following too. All right. All right. There's two of them. There's this one and the Bible with Frisco 2020. And hey, they might all just be following the Bible with Frisco. But if you know them and you know they're following the Bible with Frisco, you tell them to come over here, drop a note, say, hey, I'm here and I'm watching. That goes along with anybody else that's watching too. I really do appreciate the likes and the comments. And I do get back to them daily. That's why sometimes my uh, and that's why sometimes my blogs are cut way off in the afternoon and stuff like that. Anyway, that being said, let's do some local weather. Today's local weather is going to be brought to us by a local business. Um, what is that local business? Um, how about... Um, I don't know who's, who's it going to be. Who shall it be? Um, I would say Dog and Suds Restaurant, but Dog and Suds has been out of business for over seven... Uh, for over 23 years. So, 
actually a lot longer than that, probably 40 years. So we're not going to get Dog and Suds as our local business sponsor. But that's okay. Here we go with the weather. Today's weather forecast. For right now, generally clear skies. Temperature 87 degrees and sunny. Generally clear skies overnight with lows around 73 degrees Fahrenheit and winds west to northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then Saturday, partly cloudy skies, highs around 84 degrees Fahrenheit, winds north to northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. That was August the 29th, Saturday. And then mostly cloudy skies with a few showers uh, later. Lows around 61 degrees Fahrenheit with winds north to northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chances of rain 30%. And then Sunday, August the 30th, mostly cloudy skies early and will be coming partly cloudy later in the day. Hmm. High temperatures around 79 degrees Fahrenheit and winds east to southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And a few clouds overnight with low temperatures reaching down to 63 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are going to be east to southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then, Monday, August the 31st, considerable cloudiness and a stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. Highs around 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are going to be light and variable south to southeast at approximately 5 miles per hour. Variable clouds with a slight chance of thunderstorms overnight. Lows around 67 degrees Fahrenheit with winds light and variable kind of east to southeast at about 3 miles per hour. Chances of rain 30%. And then Tuesday. Yes, I guess that's when she moves in. Laura has finally made herself up the coast and all the way up into our area. September the 1st. Mixed clouds and sun with scattered thunderstorms. Highs around 79 degrees Fahrenheit with winds south to southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chances of rain 50%. Then scattered thunderstorms in the evening, mainly cloudy late with a few showers. Lows around 64 degrees Fahrenheit with winds directly west at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chances of rain 60%. And then Wednesday, September the 2nd, mostly cloudy skies, stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. Highs around 80 degrees Fahrenheit with winds west to northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. A few clouds uh, with lows around 62 degrees Fahrenheit and winds light and variable. So there you have it. That's your five-day forecast for the St. Charles Bewing area. Alrighty, well, alrighty then. Uh, once I get some sponsors that are going to be kicking in, oh, I'll be kicking it out. You know what I'm saying? Probably got one or two friends that really uh, miss my sponsorship because, well, all the hundreds of thousands of 123 followers I think I've got after uh, six years of doing this. Uh, well, there we go. Those are the faithful followers of the Shen Show. Actually, those are the ones that are subscribed on my channel on YouTube. I'd like to have a few more, but this is what I deal with, and so this is what I, this here is who I reckon to. So, folks, here you go. How about this? I'm going to do a speech, and I'm going to do it in a language. I mean, an uh, impersonation. On October 5th, 1906, Mr. Clemens, Mark Twain to some of y'all folks, followed a musical recital by his daughter in Northbrook, Connecticut. He addressed her audience on the subject of stage fright. He thanked the people for making things as easy as possible for his daughter's American debut and Contrello, and then told of his first experience before the public. My heart goes out in sympathy to anyone who is making his first appearance before an audience of human beings. By a direct process of memory, I go back 40 years, 
while less one month, for I'm older than I look. I recall the occasion of my first appearance. San Francisco knew me then only as a reporter, and I was to make my bow to San Francisco as a lecturer. I knew that nothing short of compulsion would get me to the theater, so I bound myself by a hearty head and fast contract so that I could not escape. I got to the thirty to the theater forty five minutes before the hour set for the lecture. My knees were shaking so that I didn't know whether I could stand up. If there is an awful, horrible melee in the world, it's stage fright and sickness. They are a pair. I had stage fright then for the first and last time. I was on, only sick once, too. It was on a little ship on which there were 200 other passengers. I was sick. I was so sick that there wasn't any left for those other 200 passengers. It was dark and lonely behind the scenes in the theater, and I peeked through the little peek holes they have in the curtains and looked into the big auditorium that was dark and empty, too. By and by, it lighted up, and the audience began to arrive. I had a great number of friends of mine, stalwart men, to sprinkle themselves through the audience armed with big clubs. Every time I said anything that could possibly guess that I intended to be funny, they were to pound those clubs on the floor, and then <laughs> there was a... On the floor, then... There was a kindly lady in a box up there, also a good friend of mine, that the wife of the governor. She was to watch me intently, and when I glanced towards her, she was going to deliver a jubilant laugh that would lead the whole audience into applause. At last, I began. I had the manuscript tucked under a United States flag in front of me where I could get to it in case of need. But I managed to get started without it. I walked up to and down. I was young in those days and needed the exercise, and talked and talked. Right in the middle of the speech, I had placed a gem. I had put in a moving, pathetic part, which was to get at the hearts of the and souls of my hearers. When I delivered it, they did just what I had hoped and expected. They sat silent and awed. I had touched them. Then I happened to glance up at the box where the governor's wife was. You know what happened? Well, after the first agonizing five minutes, my stage fright left me, never to return. I know if... I was going to be hanged, I could get up and make a good showing, and I intend to, but I shall never forget my feeling before the agony left me, and I got up here to thank you folks for helping my daughter by your kindness to li live through her first appearance. And I want to thank you for your appreciation of her singing, which is by the way, hereditarily, heredity. And there you have it. That was a speech made by Mark Twain years and years, oh, and years ago. Ha ha. And I believe I done an okay uh, impersonation of Mark Twain. I, I think so. Um. I don't know. I never really met him and or I didn't really ever hear him personally speak. Uh, so I'm going to have to say, you know, I'm older. I'm old, but I'm not as old as I sound. Ha, 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 ha. And by the way, I thought there was a speech that said, you know, it was a quote from Mark Twain, but I thought there was a speech that said the, uh, um, 
the rumors of my death are over exaggerated well it was not exactly a speech that said that it was a um, wasn't a speech that said that it was just a quote because what had happened was he was in debt like quite a big debt so he decided to make a lecture tour in London and so he took off and headed for London and then when he returned a reporter kind of located him and found him and asked him what was going what was going on and well at that point in time he said you're alive and Mark Twain said yes, he'd been reading the newspapers, and at that point in time, there had been three or four ob um, bogus obituaries on, on his life. And so, therefore, when the reporter asked him the question, he said, the rumors of my, life, my death have been greatly exaggerated. And so, there you have it. That was Samuel Clemens's quote, Mark Twain's quote, quote. Mark Twain, by the way, means safe depth, safe passage in water depth, because Mark Twain, Samuel Clemens, I say, should say, Samuel Clemens was a steamboat captain, a steamboat captain, and uh, so therefore he knew the river terms, and well, when they dropped the rope and check out how deep the water was, when they said Mark Twain, that meant that there was safe passage. And so he adapted that name as his pen name. All right, that being said, hey, let's look into uh, story time for the kids. Um, I believe it's about that time. Yeah, sure, why not? We'll do some stories for the kids. How about... All right, where are we at? Uh, the three wise men. A woman gets healed. The blind beggar. The uh, prodigal son. Jacob and Esau. The story of Moses. And next week. Uh, what was the next story in line? Noah and the Ark. Did I tell the Noah and the Ark story? Maybe. I think there's a longer version of it, though. We'll, oh, we'll hit this. I'm sure I did, but the first thing, Noah's Ark and the Flood. There we go. The story of Noah and the Flood Bible Story Guide. Noah set a righteous example for his entire generation. The story of Noah and the Flood plays out in Genesis 6, 1-11. Over the course of history, as the children of Adam populated the earth, humans continued to overlap, to overstep the limits God had placed on them. Their increasing disobedience caused God to resort, resort his lordship by engaging, engineering a fresh start that would give the human race another opportunity at obedience. The consequences of humankind's widespread corruption was a great flood that effectively, effectively ended all but a remnant of life on earth. God's grace preserved the lives of eight people, Noah and his family. And then God made a covenant promise to never again destroy the earth by flood. The Story of Noah and the Great Flood God saw how great wickedness had become and decided to wipe humankind off the face of the earth. But one righteous man among all the people of the time 
Noah, found favor in God's eyes. With very specific instructions, God told Noah to build an ark before him and his family in preparation for a catastrophic flood that would destroy everything living on the earth. God also instructed Noah to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, both male and female, and seven pairs of all the clean animals, along with every kind of food to be stored for the animals and his family while on the ark. Noah obeyed everything God commanded him to do. And after Noah and his family had entered the ark, rain fell for a period of forty days and nights. The waters flooded the earth for a hundred and fifty days, and every living thing was destroyed. As the waters receded, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Accurat. Noah and his family continued to wait for almost eight more months while the surface of the earth dried out. Finally, after an entire year, God invited Noah to come out of the ark. Immediately, Noah built an altar and offered burnt sacrifices with some of the clean animals to give thanks to God for deliverance. God was pleased with the offerings and promised never again to destroy all the living creatures as he had just done. Later, God established a covenant with Noah. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. As a sign of the everlasting covenant, God set a rainbow in the sky. And there you have it. So, that's where your rainbow came from. The rainbow in the sky lets you know that the rain is going to dry. Oh, that is why we have a rainbow in the sky. A rainbow in the sky. Okay. I just kind of made up a song as I went along. Just for you and for me and for everybody. I made up a song as I went along. Trying to get the rhythm and the blues. Because if you want to sing it and you want to find a tune. If nobody you can't lose. So I sang that song all along. Yes, I did. I sang that song. All along, well, I did. Well, I want more time for the money. I do more times for the show. I three more times to get ready. And then I go, okay, I go, but don't you? I step on my police face shoes. I said, you can do anything. And I lay off of my police face shoes. I said, I go, 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 and today's Daily Bread is going to be brought to you by The Bible with Briscoe 2020. Yes, The Bible with Briscoe 2020 is a daily reading of the Bible to be completed within one year. Today's reading is going to be Psalms 123 through 125 and 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 18. So don't forget to tune in to The Bible with Briscoe 2020. Alrighty, hey, there we go. Our uh, daily bread. God, our rescuer. This is today's devotion. God, our rescuer. And the inscriptions, the scriptures that go with God, our rescuer, is going to be Ezekiel 34, 5 through 12. 
So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And when they were scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. My sheep wandered all over the mountain, and on every hill, on every high hill, they were scattered over the whole earth, and no one searched or looked for them. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord, as surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord. Because my flock lacks a shepherd, and so has been plundered, and has become food for all the wild animals, and because my shepherds did not search for my flocks, but cared for themselves rather than for my flocks. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I am against the shepherds that will hold them accountable, and will hold them accountable for my flock. I will remove them from tending the flocks, so that the shepherds can no longer feed themselves. I will rescue my flocks from their mouths, and it will no longer be food for them. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flocks when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. And there you have it. That was God our Rescuer. All right then, hey, that looks like the end of the Daily Bread portion of the program that was brought to you by the Bible with Briscoe. The Bible with, not Bible with Frisco 2020. The Bible with Frisco 2020 is a daily reading of the Bible to be completed within one year. Don't forget to tune in to The Bible with Frisco 2020. Alrighty then. Hey, that looks like it's it for me, friends. And so I've got one more song for you, and it'll go something like this. Oh, well, goodbye, my friends. It's uh, time to go. I said goodbye, my friends. It's a... Uh, Time to go, oh, I hate to leave you, but I really must go. So goodbye, my friends, goodbye. This here's Ben Shenandoah Briscoe saying hello and how are you? Thanks for tuning in to the Shin Show, and as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I. So come back and see me tomorrow because, well, hey, I'll be here, and I hope that you are too. <laughs>